Hello everyone, welcome back to VTU e-section. So myself, Professor Nitin Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of CSE, VVC, Mysore. In this video, I am going to explain the program number 7, which comes under the syllabus 18 CSMP 68 Mobile Application Development Lab of CSE ISC, 6th semester. So the program number 7 deals with text-to-speech application. So as I mentioned earlier in my videos, so you need around 6 GB RAM to run Android Studio Framework. Why you need 6 GB RAM? Why? Because whatever the services that you want to develop line by line, which is already available in the Android Studio Framework, just you must learn how to use them. That itself will occupy around 4 GB RAM. Various services which are, uh, which are required. For example, if you want to develop this text-to-speech application from scratch means you have to write around 10 pages of code. But, so you with respect to this program number 7 concerned, this is the simplest program which is available in your syllabus where you are going to write around 4 lines of code to complete this application. Okay, let's start with the design. So, simple design is also very much simple. So, please observe, this is my activity. So, firstly, I am going to mention the title of that application that is text to speech. Just I am going to give the title, it is not mandatory. So, next I am going to give, I am going to make use of plain text. Plain text means you are going to read the input from the user. Text view means you are going to display the result. In the plain text, I am going to give the hint to the user that enter the text here. Means whatever the text that you want to convert to the speech, so you must enter the text here. And I am going to use a button by name convert. Is it clear? Title, plain text. Inside the plain text, you are going to enter the text. And there is a button by name convert. Whenever you click this button convert, whatever the text that you have entered here, that will be converted to speech. This is my design. This is my application design. This is the program number 7. So, let us list out the components which are required as well as the uh, layout. So, uh, as we have only three components here, we will go with the relative layout. So, one advantage of relative layout means, if you are using constraint means, so you have to set the cursors for all four sides. But if you are using relative means, just if you set the cursor for any two sides or the previous component, that is more than enough. Okay, the layout that I am going to fix here. So, this is the good practice you have to follow before you define the design, you must fix, before you start the designing, you must fix the layout. Okay, so then I need, what is the purpose of this particular component? Just to display the title, right? So, I need one text view. How many text views are required? One text view. So, next I need one plain text inside which the user is going to enter the one plain text, the user is going to enter the input in here in this plain text. So, I will make use of attribute my name int and I am going to give the hint to the user that enter the text here. Then I need only one button, button. So, the button name is convert. Whenever the user clicks on this button after entering the text, whatever the text that is present in the plain text will be converted to speech. This is my design requirement. It is the simplest design as well as it is the simplest program which is available in your syllabus. Hardly you need half an hour to implement this. Okay, let us start the implementation. So, now I will show you how to develop a simple text to speech application. So, I guess you, the design requirement is clear. So, I will open a new project. So, I will give the name speech application. Speech application, the language is Java and I will finish. So, the text-to-speech application, you do not have enough uh, complexity in designing. Why? Because you are going to add only one single button and even uh, with respect to the components that you are going to add, 
we are going to add just say one simple title followed by one plain text to indicate the user to enter the text along with a simple button by name convert okay so my uh, application is ready project is ready for the development so i will go to the design okay so this is my design so as the number of uh, components required is very less i will make use of the constraint layout itself so already the text view is readily available why because initially whenever you create a new project there will be a one text view that indicates the hello world okay i will change the same text view text that is present in this text view and i will rename it as text to speech app text to speech app and i will increase the font size so it's better to place the widgets towards the loud uh, don't place the widgets towards the head just why because there is a possibility of skipping that particular content when you are when you uh, try to see the output okay so now i am done with adding the title the next i will add a plain text why because the uh, that's the one from which we are going to get the input from the user i'm going to add the plain text then i'm going to add a simple button and i'm going to rename the button so as i mentioned in the previous examples there is a name that is present in the plain text i need to remove it and i need to give the hint to the user so i will go to the edit text edit text and uh, i'm going to change the id why because it is lengthier please observe edit text 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 person name is not required i will rename why because i am working with only one edit text that's why i'm going to rename it as edit text that's it okay and i will remove the text i will remove just value don't remove the whole attribute just value and create a new line had hint enter text here okay so now let's see the design is it what have written on the board title of the application plain text where the user is going to enter the input the idea of this one is just edit text and a button to convert okay this is about the design i guess there is no doubt in the design we will proceed with the logic part so i will go to java part okay so firstly i will declare two global variables first one is text to speech please observe there is a package by name text to speech tts i will use that one text to speech and i will use the reference as t1 okay so next i will declare i need a edit text right why because in my program what is user is going to enter in the edit text that will only be the recognized and that will all be that will be the one which is converted to speech that's why i will use edit text from here onwards that's why i will declare a variable dot e1 okay so now i need to identify this edit text which is there in the design part why because i need to parse what user has entered in that edit text that's why e1 is equal to find view by id r dot id dot edit text why because the id you have renamed the id to just edit text so next i need to uh, call the text to speech why because i need to add the, i need to initialize the text to speech text to speech is a service please remember it's a service inbuilt service that we are creating that we are using here so that's why while using any services it's uh, you can you, there is no need of writing the code from scratch just you have to write around four to five lines to use the service okay so t1 means text to speech service is equal to 
I'm initializing the text to speech service new text to speech that will be applicable only for this activity. That's why get application context. Even you can use this keyword. Both will work in the same manner. Get application context new. Now you need to initialize. Just observe text to speech initializer. Initialize listener. Okay. It will automatically create uh, init method. Okay. So I will select this one. It will automatically create the init method. Just semicolon is missing here. That's why it's showing here. I will add the semicolon. Okay. So I will rename this parameter i as status. Okay. I will rename the parameter i as status. This is a overridden class. Just a simple thing. If the status not equal to text to speech if a status is not equal to text to speech error means whatever you have entered is correct then i'm going to choose a language okay so that language will be used as a for the speech t1 is equal to set language so the lot of options are there. So I'm going to choose locally UK, English. You can use Canada, you can choose Chinese, Japanese, such languages are readily available. So I will go with the UK English. Okay, just a simple thing. I have identified the edit text and I have initialized the text to speech component. While initializing, it will create a init method, overridden method. So if the status is not equal to any error means, then set the language UK as the standard language for the conversion of text to speech. From here onwards, while using the T1 uh, service, the language that will appear is UK. Okay. So now I will write a simple method. Okay. Now I will write it. Just observe how to look where this particular method is closing. Just if you place the cursor here, you can look this method is closed here. So now I will write an independent method by name public void the method name is convert i will use the same title which i have used in my button view so firstly i need to parse the edit text that is nothing but e1 what user has entered okay so string i will give the reference as to speak is equal to what present in e1 get that and convert it to string what is there in e1 what is the what the user has entered in e1 get the text and convert it to string so from here onwards to speak means it's a string which we have obtained from the edit text one okay so next i will call the service t1 there's an inbuilt method called speak speak so what's the parameter that we are passing to that speak? What we have stored as a string. What we have stored as a string. We have stored by the name to speak. I will pass that as a parameter to speak. And I will call text to speech. And it should be flushed until it reaches zero. Q plus null. Okay, simple method by name convert. I am reading what user has entered in the edit text and I am converting it into string. I am here onwards, I am going to refer it by the name to speak. I will pass that to the service T1, text to speech service. That's the reference, right? T1. So I will pass that string and until it reaches null, it should be converted to speak. Okay. So now I have written this method independently. I need to add this method in that button. So if that's the case, I will go to the design code. I will search for the button that I have added. This is the button. I will add this method by using on click feature. Okay. So this completes the program number seven. Let's see the output. 
it's a simple program that is present in your whole syllabus hardly you need to spend around 20 minutes to complete this program not more than that but in some cases uh, due to this emulator problem you cannot uh, listen the output in your emulator if that's the case build this project and install the apk file to see the to listen the output i will show how to build the apk file for this particular project so you can follow the same steps and you can install that application in your phone and you can listen the output So my build is over, application is getting installed. So this is my text-to-speech application. This is what we have designed. Hello, Nitin Kumar. Okay. Hello, Nitin Kumar. Okay. So please observe. So in some, this emulator is not providing the support to convert this into speech. Why? Because this, okay, the audio of a computer device is in my control. But this emulator, this device audio is not in my control. If that's the case, what you're going to do is, you're going to uh, build this project and you're going to install the APK file. Just observe, there is an option by name build. Okay. So if you want to build, you, go, you have to go to this option and build there are two options one is apk other one is bundle so if you want to build your application in such a way that you want to host it in the play store then you will uh, select this build bundle so that it's all supporting files will be bundled and the hostable application hostable file you are going to get so if you want to build simple apk to see the output then you can go for this option build apk click on it so once again your application is going to execute okay once again, your application will be executed. The Gradle will be built. So you, have, you can observe the message here, locate. So if you click on that locate, it will take you to that APK file. Just I will show you. Why? Well, because uh, the emulator will not support uh, the real time audio. So if that's the case, you can place the toast message to indicate the examiner that uh, whether you are getting the output or not. Otherwise, you can install this APK file in your mobile phones. And please remember, it's not possible to transfer this APK file through Gmail or Google Drive. So if you want to install this APK file in your mobiles, either you have to connect uh, your mobile to the uh, device directly using the USB cable and you can transfer it. Other else, you can uh, transfer this APK file using WhatsApp. Why? Well, because uh, this unauthorized APK transfer is restricted in uh, Google products such as uh, Google Drive or Gmail will not support this uh, APK transfer. So now the build is over. Please observe the build APK is generated successfully. There you can look at uh, uh, URL uh, indicating locate. If you click on that locate, it will take you to the folder where this APK file is present. Is it clear? This is my APK file. Don't worry about this output metadata. This is my APK file. You can install this APK file and you can check the output. Thank you.